I welcome all of you to this session of Right Circle. Prabha Khetan Foundation is a Kolkata-based non-profit trust established by late Dr. Prabha Khetan back in 1980s. Dr. Khetan was an eminent literature, cultural and social activist who valued the heritage of Indian literature, art and culture. Her vision has guided Prabha Khetan Foundation to strongly focus on widening the spectrum of literary and cultural world in the society to prize activities and events in more than 50 cities in India and overseas. The foundation has charted a resplendent journey of four long decades in curating initiatives that encourage literature, art forms, socio-cultural development, and humanitarian causes. <clears throat> Pursuits and projects undertaken for promotion of literature, culture, heritage, women empowerment, and social welfare are the hallmarks of Prabha Khetan Foundation. The foundation enjoys the noble patronage of patron Sri Cement Limited. Support and cooperation of distinguished associates, partners, collaborators, and SRs, women of India, have helped, helped the foundation successfully curate book launches, authors, meets, cultural programs, literature fairs, and boutique festivals. ESAS is the women empowerment wing of the foundation, representing a conglomeration of successful professional women across all spheres of society who have immense contribution in facilitating events of the foundation as moderators, conversationalists, and other roles. Eminent literatures, performing artists, musicians, and cultural bigwig have graced the foundation multifaceted literary and cultural events. Events that have become landmarks in India and abroad include Kitab for book launches, an author's afternoon, the right circle, and their universe rights <coughs> dedicated to English literature. Kalam for Hindi literature, Akhar for regional literature, Loves for Urdu, Farsi, Persian, and Arabic. Ek Bulakar and Chopal for meeting of minds with eminent personalities from different walks of life. Sur or Saj, traditional singers and musicians, Chalchitra Rangmanj for promoting performing arts and special screening of films. Prabha Khetan Foundation is a front runner in implementation of several projects in the domain of self, social welfare and basic education. Some of the social welfare projects include Muskan for popularizing heritage literature and culture among students, Rahat for providing relief and protecting the vulnerable section of the society, Sayo for collaborating and providing monetary support to other organizations, and Karuna for spreading love and awareness uh, towards pets and preventing cruelty towards them. Today, our guest author is Vikram Sharma. Vikram, I welcome you on stage. Thank you. Vikram Sharma is a director and third generation shareholder at Bhatnath, India's enduring legacy brand of Ayurveda remedies and supplements. He attended the Doon School and is an, is an alumni of the London School of Economics. He has an intimate practical knowledge of Ayurveda from having spent his growing years in Patna where the family home was situated on the premises of the Patna production unit. And where medicines are prepared using traditional methods and the purest ingredients. Vikram is a passionate advocate advocate for environmental sustainability and animal rights. He is a hands-on father to an energetic three-year-old. I also invite Esa's woman of Patna and Vita Pradhan on stage for the conversation. Namaste and good evening. Thank you for all of you coming in spite of all that rain. And uh, before we begin the conversation, I would like to uh, say that Ayurved Advantage is a well-written book 
the concepts are very simply explained. One is not bombarded with too many scientific words. The information flows in a simple manner explaining the body types, <coughs> dosh, chakra, and then points out to the advantage and reasons of living life in synchrony with nature. In this book, Vikram, you mentioned that food, sleep, and sex are the three pillars of life. How we manage these determine our mental, physical, and spiritual potential. The key to finding balance lies in the doctrine of Tridosh. Tell us about Tridosh and how it is connected with the five elements of nature. Charan has answered your question in a few thousand words. <laughs> but I'm going to cut it very short. The five elements of nature which are absolutely essential to life are air, the air that we breathe, water, earth, space, ether and fire. Now these five exist in us, in every individual <coughs> as with Tridoshas, Vata, Pitta and Kapha. Every individual is born with a very unique <coughs> disposition, composition of this and that more or less stays um, the same throughout that individual's life. Of course these are subtle forces so they are always in a state of flux. Now, we human beings spend most of our lives in just keeping this balance between Vata, Pitta and Kapha. Uh, and this theory, if it's properly understood and if, and if the rules are properly implemented, has in it the capacity to sort out a lot of human issues. In Ayurveda, we um, attach importance to prevention rather than cure. So then what happens is that you um, make your immunity so strong, if you understand these theories, that you do not fall sick very often. And when you do fall sick, then you see your fall is cushioned and you recover faster. Um, so, so Tridosha is vat, the Vata, Pitta and Kapha as I said um, and this exists in every individual. The details of Vata, Pitta, Kapha are all in, uh, written in the book so you must read it for you to understand and I have written it in a very simple fashion, gotten rid of all the technical jargon because I understand that, um, that people would not be interested in a lot of technical jargon. Now, so the five elements exist in each one of us in, in terms of Vata, Pitta and Kapha which are usually in a state of flux um, and we spend our lives in just trying to maintain this balance. Now food, sleep and sex are the three pillars of life, they are the three pillars of Ayurveda. Most of the problems that are happening in this world are happening because people are not eating correctly, um, they are either eating too much or they are eating the wrong food or they are eating when they are not hungry which is a very dangerous thing to do. Um, or they are um, sleep deprived or they are sexually deprived. So when we talk about uh, food, the, the, you see it starts right from the time you go to procure your food. How did you earn your money? If your money was earned through fair means, then the sattvic energy of that will go into the food and, um, and that will eventually impact your body, your system, your mind, everything. If your money was earned through unfair means, then there is a tamasic energy that goes into the food. So it starts with that and then it goes on to um, how the food is stored in your house, how it is cooked. Now it is very important and in Ayurveda and in, even in Hinduism we say that you see people should play bhajan or something pleasant uh, when food is being cooked. This is there, this is seen in many cultures. I was in Turkey and I and the, you see the um, the Turkish culture the, is, is such that when food was cooked traditionally, the dervishes would be dancing and they would be singing songs, singing songs of love. So that that energy would then be infused in the food. How you are eating your food, with whom you are eating the food, what, are you, what is the content of your conversation, what are your thoughts when you are eating the food, all of those things are very, very important. So mindful eating is very important. This talks about food. Now when we talk about food, we also obviously talk about water. 70% of us know water. How we handle water is very important. Um, the water that is capable of quenching your thirst is also capable of drowning you. You must keep that in mind. When you wake up, you see, when you wake up in the morning, the first thing you should do is have a glass of water. Before a bath or a shower, you must have a glass of water. That prevents heart attacks. Um, 45 minutes before your meal, you must have a glass of water. 
immediately after your meal, you should not drink cold water or water at room temperature because that interferes with the digestive process in your system. Before going to bed, it's very important to have a glass of water so that your system is hydrated throughout the night. Um, now, when we talk about the elements and doshas, there's something I want to talk about, and that is Agni. In India and in Hinduism, Agni is really revered. So just like water, Agni is one of the elements, and the same fire, you must remember, that is capable of keeping you warm in the winter, is also capable of burning you down to ashes. It just depends on how it is dealt with. And the fire that exists outside exists in our system as the digestive fire. It is more subtle, but it is as deadly as the fire outside. We are as young as our fire. A person will live longer, will fall sick less often if that digestive fire, which is, which is responsible for the assimilation of food, digestion of food, for excretion, for maintaining the body temperature, all of those things is dealt with carefully. So each element is very important because each element as a dosha is present in the body. Sleep. So we come to the second one which is sleep. Most people think today that you know it's okay if I haven't slept for a few nights, I'll make it up next week or I'll make it up, but that does not happen, the damage is done. For a child, like my son is about four years old, um, 11 to 12 hours of sleep for an adult seven to eight hours of sleep and um, there, there, are, there are no shortcuts to this. So if you think that, you've, um, that you're not able to sleep for a few nights or you're traveling, you're catching these early morning flights or partying late night and then you make it up for it later, it doesn't happen, the damage is done. Because people are sleep deprived and sleep is actually one of my favorite topics. There, you know, there are issues with uh, concentration, there are temper issues, there are all kinds of issues that come because of that. So we have to make sure that we sleep properly. We do not take stimulants after 3 o'clock um, in the afternoon because they will interfere. Coffee typically stays in the system for 10 hours, the caffeine effect. So you have to calculate when you are having it. If you are having it at 5 and you are trying to sleep at 8, it's, it's not going to happen. It will not be a smooth process for you. When it comes to sleep, we have to all try and follow the circadian rhythm. So you sleep shortly after sunset and you wake, wake up when the sun is rising. That is the best and the sleep that we get between 11 and 3 is the most powerful sleep. It is equivalent, one hour of that is equivalent to 3 hours of sleep at any other time of the day or night. And finally we come to sex, uh, which is again a topic that I, is very close to Ayurveda. So what Ayurveda says is that it is best to practice um, karma within the framework of dharma um, and this leads to longevity. What this means is that when you are indulging in the sexual activity, it is better to do it with a person who you are emotionally um, connected with, who you are in love with, who you are uh, also spiritually connected with. Um, so what happens is that in Ayurveda they say that when that happens, then the art of love making um, releases its own natural antioxidants which are very very powerful and what the couple experience is something similar to the union between Shiva and Shakti. I've mentioned all this in the book, explained it all in the book. Food, sleep and sex, the three pillars of life. Very very important, each one has to be addressed and um, the elements the have to, which are present in our body as the doshas have to be really taken care of and respected. Uh, you know, in the book you mentioned that for every ailment known to man, God has given a plant to heal. Tell us about some of the herbs which are elixirs of life. Oh, Ashwagandha is my favorite. Um, I take it every day. Um, it, Ashwa basically means horse and uh, they say that if you, if you have Ashwagandha regularly, you know, you'll be as powerful and as active as a horse is. Um, it's now used everywhere in the world. People are using it in protein shakes because people have, it's now been proven um, in the US that muscle recovery after a workout is best when you add Ashwagandha to your protein shake. And Ayurveda has spoken about Ashwagandha thousands and thousands of years back. It's been one of the 
one of the star <laughs> products, a star hub, an, an elixir of life. It also calms the nerves, it calms the system, um, it uh, gives energy from within, it makes the immune system very strong. Now there is a herb called Shatavari which is very very good for women. Uh, it is something that women must have. It takes care of a, if, if had regularly, it takes care of a lot of the hormonal issues that would otherwise arise with age. Um, now, amla, which is a fruit, is something which is an, is an elixir of life, absolutely. You know, the American Health Journal called the Indian gooseberry the most potent antioxidant source in the world a few years ago. And uh, amla is, of course, the chief ingredient that goes into Chavan Prash, so, which makes it all um, very, very powerful. Uh, then when we talk about um, Moringa, Moringa is another thing. India is one of the largest manufacturers and exporters of Moringa in the world. Um, Ayurveda has always spoken about Moringa and it's interesting that in the last three or four years the world has taken notice of Moringa because all the Hollywood celebrities take it. It is their staple. But Ayurveda has always said it. Um, I've realized that a lot of things that Ayurveda has said so many thousands of years ago is stuff that's now coming up in the world because somebody um, you know who's an influencer or who's a celebrity uh, is swearing by it. On a personal level, moringa. What is the qualities of moringa? Oh, it's anti-cancerous. It's anti-inflammatory. It's uh, it's a very powerful antioxidant. You name it, and it's got it. Whether it's your hair, your so moringa from the leaves or from the fruit. No, either. Both are very good. Both are excellent. It's coming in powder form. Is it? It's available in the powder form, of course. Yeah. Tell us about Rasayan and anti-aging the Ayurvedic way. So, I'll first tell you about anti-aging the Ayurvedic way. Uh, contrary to what most people think, you know, about anti-aging, which is um, soap, uh, sorry, uh, anti-aging soaps and moisturizers and all, Ayurveda looks at it very differently. We go back to Agni over here. You are, Charak has said that you are as young or as old as your Agni, your digestive fire which is responsible for the glow on your face, which is responsible for that youthful look on your face. So you have to keep the Agni in your system burning very well. Um, now one of the things that most people do is that they will um, have water immediately after a meal and that immediately, immediately, in Hindi they say ki Agni ko man ka de hai. And start that, uh, diluting the digestive juices. The other thing is intermittent fasting, which really helps with keeping the acne strong. Um, not eating when you're when you're not hungry is very very important. You have to follow your hunger patterns when it comes to food. Does it have something to say? <laughs> um, so what else did that? Uh, so we're talking about anti-aging. So anti-aging. So um, acne is number one when it comes to anti-aging. The second thing is how you breathe. So this is aerobic versus anaerobic breathing. Uh, the best example for that is the tortoise that breathes very slowly and lives up to 200 years. The faster you breathe, the faster you age. Faster you breathe, you age. So I'm an athlete, and when they were training us, uh, when they were training us in school, they taught us techniques to breathe slowly. And I did not know what that meant at that time, but the coach would say that you know, never breathe from your mouth when you're running. Take yeah. slow breaths from your, from your nose, yeah. hold it, and then slow breaths out. And before you know it, um, that will become a way of life, which is what Ayurveda says. Then there are also lots of other things, like for instance, if you brush them with your right hand, start brushing with your left hand, because that will activate a different side of your brain. All this is anti aging. Walk backwards, skip backwards, learn a new skill, solve puzzles. All of this is anti-aging. Then, of course, there is um, what you think because um, you know. Again, we talk about the secret, which is so big today. You know, what you think is what you become. Ayurveda has always said that if you pick up old Ayurvedic texts, whether it's the Charak Samhita or whichever one, you will see that Ayurveda has always said that if you think positive, then you will remain healthy and healthy because every cell in your body is not only active and alive but is extremely intelligent. So your own conversation with yourself and how you treat yourself and what you think of yourself is very, very, very important. Your 
We must remember that most of our thoughts are negative. We get 60,000 thoughts a day, close to 60,000 thoughts a day, and most of them are repetitive and negative thoughts. Ayurveda says that it is very important for us to manage that. The minute there's a negative thought, you say stop. And you switch off from that and you move towards a positive thought. So that is very important for anti-aging. And then of course, with, uh, finally the science um, that we've already spoken about, like um, um, Ashwagandha, Amla, these are all single herb science. So the best science for the heart and for cholesterol and those issues is Arjuna Rish, is Arjun, which is available in the form of Arjuna Rish and also in the form of powder. Um, <coughs> Multi herb rasayans like um, Trifula, like Chavantraj are extremely impactful, very, very, very effective. They are time tested. Yeah. Uh, in your book, you know, you have quoted Acharya Shunya who said, A well lived day is medicine unto itself. Please elaborate on the role of food, thought, and action on a well being. You have mentioned a few. So this starts from the moment you wake up. Um, you know, you so Ayurveda says that it's you, the old texts are uh, proof that Ayurveda has always said that you wake up with gratitude, have a glass of water, um, do meditation, do your yoga and pranayam, all of that in the morning, and you start your day on a positive note. Be mindful of what you are eating. Be mentally present wherever you are. Do everything mindfully. So when you are eating, eat mindfully. When you're having a conversation with somebody, ha uh, have it mindfully. So, you know, being distracted is something that Ayurveda says that we have to find a way to completely avoid. Um, so starting from that, to watching what you're eating, to uh, to the exercise, to how you're sleeping, Ritu Charya and Din Charya, all of that is very important. So most of it I've already covered. It's just that it's a scientific and a holistic science. So it, it looks after the mind, the body, the soul, everything. So starting from positive affirmations to what you are eating, to what you are thinking, to who you are interacting with, to what your thoughts are, to when you are sleeping, everything has to be looked into and that's what, that's what leads to a holistic and a happy and a long life. What is Ritu Charya? Ritu Charya is um, that you eat as per the season. So whatever is seasonal will always benefit you the most as opposed to something which is not seasonal and has been stored in the refrigerator and then given to you. What would non-veg Which season does it fall? So when it comes to non-veg, non-veg is considered to be tamasic food. So unless there are certain cases where it's recommended when that when certain people are very seriously ill. But typically it's, you see non-veg takes so long to digest. And the tamasic quality that is so strong that is that it is not recommended in Ayurveda. So you know Ritu Charya, you were speaking about Ritu Charya, on the same in the same context I would like to ask is like today, you know, it's like an in thing to have chia seeds and quinoa and they are all exported. Mm -hmm. They are all imported. So what would Ayurveda uh, recommend in place of these two things? So you see, um, more Ayurveda, so Chita, of course, this is, this is a new phenomenon, right? Yeah. All of these things being imported yes. for the last 20 years, maybe? So, so if you see what each one does for you and then you see which herb is available uh, in nature that does the same thing for you, you'll be surprised. Whether it's so you see like um, omega, people talk about omega 3, you know, so chia seeds are very high in omega 3, I'm just giving an example. So is the seed and flax seed oil. So that alternative is already available. Now, if you are having chia seeds and you are having flax seed oil, it's not like your body will absorb. There will be an overdose. And it's not like it's going to absorb all of it. Some of it will be flushed out. So those everything, if you see the benefit and then you see what herbs we have, that benefit is already there in something, either in a either in a mixture, a concoction, a multi herb preparation or a single herb. Like people are talking about coenzyme Q10, you know, um, very good for the heart. But then Arjuna is, Arjuna is very good for the heart. There is nothing better than Arjuna for the heart. The thing is that you have to be consistent. With Ayurveda, you have to be consistent. It cannot be a one-off thing. It cannot be a thing that you do 
when your mood is to do it, no, because the em emphasis is on prevention rather than cure. Here I want to say one more thing, that throughout COVID, my mom was working. It was amazing that she never got COVID. Um, she took at least four flights during the first wave and I think three flights during the second wave. She came to Patna, they were work she was working over here, she was with me, she was... And you know, it's amazing she that for the... She's an anarchy me do know. Anarchy me do know. She has like her Viloy, her bottle of Viloy goes with her wherever she goes. Similarly, um, you know, like I was talking about Shatabari and things like that, it, she's very regular and what she told me was because I got COVID and I was telling her that, Mama, you know, you, what, you were so exposed and you didn't get it and she was telling me that, you know, um, again, all the Ayurvedic things about positive thinking and she said that um, I'm so regular with my Ayurvedic herbs that I would uh, attribute a lot of this to that. On this note, what prompted you to write this book? So this is a very nice, um, so my mom has, um, my mom has been studying Ayurveda for the last, I think, over 40 years. Uh, she always wanted to take up a career, but when she got married uh, into the Vednath family, she was told that women aren't allowed to work. The only option available for her was to learn Ayurveda and work in the company. Uh, for that also my grandmother and my uncles and my dad were not keen. But she pushed her way and she kept studying Ayurveda. So for 40 years she's been studying it. Um, she's gone to Colombia many times to present a paper on Ayurvedic research. So the time when the world went, when Covid happened and we went into a forced, forced isolation, my son was born around that time, just before Covid happened. So the you know, my mom had, and I started studying Ayurveda and she started teaching me. So in a way, the, you know, the birth of the book coincided with the birth of my son. And I, and I told mom that whether it's Vasant Lal, with all due respect to him, he's a fantastic, fantastic um, author. But the books were so full of technical jargon. They were so long and tedious that for most people, it would be difficult to even read five pages. And I said that, you know, for people, no matter what echelon of society, what their professional uh, situation, what they are doing in life, what their age, people want a simple book that will explain the uh, that will explain the concepts and completely get rid of the technical jargon, and that is how the book came about. So mom taught me. I kept taking notes. I kept recording what she was saying, and then I put the book together. That, you know, on this note, I would like to share with all of you there, that there is a few pages of home concoctions, you know, home concoctions made from the day-to-day -day stuff, which is very interesting. And most of us can make this a part of our daily routine instead of, you know, having these multivitamin supplements, which Ajit endorses. <laughs> you can have these supplements. And one more thing I want to say that I want to thank my brother who's here, Harsh, because um, when you're thinking of a title of the book, we could think of anything and Ayurveda Advantage is actually his, it's something that he came up with and it is his brand. He, um, so I, I, had to, I, I asked him, can I use it for the book? And he said, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> now, we're talking about multivitamins. I'll yeah. give you a quick example. You know, vitamin C is one of the highest selling multivitamins in the world, right? Especially now, time release vitamin C. Amla is the most bioavailable and most potent source of antioxidants in the world. You know, you don't need the vitamin C tablet which also has a binding agent. It has so many other things that the body does not need in it. You just need the amla in some form or the other. Tell me something about the lemon. The lemon is again very high in vitamin lemon, C. Water, curd, so lemon water, curd, There are four things. Yeah, sure. So lemon water makes your body alkaline. Yeah. And uh, when you wake up in the morning, it's you know, people are not talking about ginger shots, but again, that's an Ayurvedic thing to have gin, uh, ginger and lemon water in the morning. It makes the body alkaline immediately. So it is very good. Lemon is very high in vitamin C, but not as high as amla is. You're talking about ghee. Ghee nourishes, uh, you know, a person's body and mind at a cellular level. So ghee is very, very important and one of, and something that I would have very strongly recommend. Um, so, maybe one teaspoon of ghee a day is great, it's absolutely amazing. Um, here you must make sure that the, that you know, 
that it's not just any ghee. What is the cow being fed? Is the cow being fed a lot of urea? If you're just picking up any ghee, then it may not help you because it will not have the healing properties. So you have to find there is a person over here in Bihar. Um, uh, it's called Oxygen Gaushala, and they do a fantastic job. You know, the cow has been there because we buy ghee from him, and we can. They have ghee cows that produce ghee to milk, and their their feed is monitored very carefully. And what do they have? Curd. So curd is again it's fantastic for the gut. You know, we, so here I'm glad you asked this question because gut is the new big thing now. The best thing for the gut is curd or um, matta, what we call matta, which is made from curd, right? Charge, charge, charge. So if you are having this, you will not have gut issues. But again, you have to be careful of one thing, and I've written that in the book. There are compatible and incompatible food combinations. Like a typical English breakfast is an incompatible food combination because they are serving milk and orange juice in the same meal. One is acidic and one is alkaline. So neither of them end up being digested in the system. So whether you are having curd or charge, you have to know what not to have it with. And I've written all of that in the book. What about Sweet curd and sour curd. So sweet curd which, is... Which one is better? No, both are fine. Both are fine. So, mishti dhoi you're talking about, right? If it's made with jaggery, it's great, but not if it's made with sugar. Okay. And the ones which are available in the market, they definitely have Absolutely. a little bit of sugar in it. Sorry, you say something. We have a question and round later. We'll have more questions and then we'll have more. Now, what is the Ayurvedic point of view on fasting? In your book, you've related fasting to the groundbreaking research of Japanese Global Laureate, Yoshinori Oshumi's work on autophagy. So first, so, uh, yeah. you know, explain what autophagy is and then how you correlate it. So, when you fast beyond a certain number of hours, and it goes about say 20 hours of fasting, your body goes into this process called <laughs> autophagy, where it starts eating up and digesting the stuff that was otherwise undigested in your body. Now that is a kind of a very intense natural cellular repair happening in the body. It's amazing because autophagy has become big now because of this Japanese scientist, but it is there in Ayurveda. Ayurveda has always spoken about it, about fasting. Intermittent fasting is nothing but fasting that Ayurveda has always, Ayurveda and Hinduism have always promoted. In fact, um, Sadhguru uh, says that fasting has got nothing to do with religion. It was given a religious twist only because people uh, back in the day knew that if, it's, if we make it religious, everybody will do it. They understood the importance of fasting and um, and that is the reason why they made it a religious thing. But actually it's nothing but a cellular repair and a cellular cleansing of the system. Now, when we are talking about fasting, um, there is a school of thought that, that one could do dry fasting. But that is completely against Ayurveda and it has it has nothing to prove that that works because 70% of our body is water and dry fasting is not recommended. You have to have water throughout your fast. Um, you have to stay very well hydrated for your um, system and for you, for your brain, for your eyes, everything to function properly. Whether 10 hours work for you or 12 hours or 16 hours, you have to see that depends on each person's constitution, depending on their unique vata, pitta and kapha uh, distribution. That will depend on that and you will know it. Your body will tell you whether that, whether that works for you or not. So, but fasting three to four times a week is very, very good. And people who are able to fast for more than 20 hours, um, it's not for everybody and it should be done not very often. Then the system goes into autophagy. Yogvahi is a unique concept in Ayurveda which recognizes certain food as being Yogvahi, meaning the act of bio-enhancers. Tell us who you are. So Kali Milch and Honey are the biggest bio-enhancers in the world. This word is again a new term, by a bio-enhancer and it's become really big. But the Hindi of that is Yogvahi, which is one of the very important things in Ayurveda. So what Ayurveda says is, like say for instance, um, Black uh, black pepper, whatever you add black pepper to, it will increase the benefit of that thing. 
that's why people say if you have a pork and you are having a, a teaspoon of honey, you must add black pepper to it because black pepper will further enhance the benefit of honey. Um, and uh, honey, um, honey is yogvahi, black pepper is yogvahi. There's a whole list of things that are yogvahi. Some of them we, we may not have heard of, uh, but um, one can always look into them and then implement them and add them. But if you are just doing black pepper, I think you are pretty sorted. And uh, uh, <coughs> in fact, sorry, one more thing. Yeah. Curcumin, you know, so uh, they say that research proves that curcumin gets absorbed best. It's Curcumin is something that's found in Hanji, you know, in turmeric. That is the, that is that part of turmeric which does all the repair and the healing. And that gets absorbed best in the body if it's mixed with black pepper. So when we are having turmeric, we should, we should add uh, black pepper. And if you see most of, if you see a typical Indian kitchen, you know, what is, how food is made. All these things are a taken part of our diet. There's nothing new in this for us. As you mentioned, COVID ke mein, we all were down with COVID. Everybody knows Josephine over here. Josephine had COVID and you know she slept in that same room as Ma, but Ma ko COVID me. And to you know the regular uh, choti choti cheese like she'll have a matha, she'll have an avla ka chutney, and one can go on with you know, the, the ingredients that we use on a day to day basis that is very very crucial. And on that note, I would ask you to even tell us about Dashmu. Dashamud, that is mentioned in Dashamud in your book. Dashamud, yes. That is something for women. I yeah. don't know too many details about that, but it is something that, um, you know, it takes care of all the women related issues. Dashamud, okay. it's a very high selling product. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And our audience, we can now request them to ask a few questions. I can go ahead. Thank you, Vikram. It was interesting to know uh, the natural food that we have in India has a lot of supplements. But I would like to know, is there any supplement of dopamine also? Uh, dopamine is a purpose, isn't it? Dopamine, we are talking about dopamine. Dopamine, yeah. about dopamine right? Dopamine so, deficiency um, causes Parkinson's and uh, Alzheimer's. So you see what I was talking about right now some time back, you know, um, like uh, when you wake up, you should you should wake up with mindfulness, you should wake up with gratitude, and then you should do everything mindfully. So one of the biggest things that combats um, this issue of Alzheimer's and stuff is doing one doing things mindfully. Not so, so, so you're right, right now I'm talking to you. So I'm 100% talking to you and I'm focused on you. I'm not thinking of something else. Then um, the other thing that I spoke about, um, like if you are somebody who uses your right hand, start using your left hand from time to time. Uh, that is something that helps with dopamine. Walk backwards, skip backwards, learn a new language or pick up a new hobby, uh, sorry, new hobby. All of those things help with dopamine. And you see what happens is that if you have purpose, if you know that you are going through your day in a certain way, um, that in itself helps with dopamine. And any food supplement that uh, actually helps in? Yeah, um, ashwagandha would be one, definitely. Brahmi would be would be one. Um, Shank Pushpi would be another one that would help with the dopamine. Thank you. I want to know which is the best herb you can take for losing weight. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think everybody <laughs> might have had this question in mind. <laughs> Nobody's found that yet, right? No, no, no. There are there are herbs, there are herbs available and they are mentioned in the book, but how they are to be taken is something that only a professional bear will tell you. Please do not get into any of the new age pills to lose weight because they, because you know what they do is they create havoc in the stomach. That 
all these new pill, new age pills that are out, I want to just, just generally warn everybody, they don't know which part to attack and where to make your nature to do yeah, it, where not to. Lot so, of side effects. it's nuts. There are, um, you think so there are a few herbs have... and I've mentioned them in the books and I've mentioned them how they are to be taken, but you have to still consult an expert vet here. And I put sure. you in touch with one. Yeah, thank you so much. But, no, but besides question. that, you see, uh, again, when we talk about food and water, and I'll talk, I'll talk, I'll give the example of my aunt, you know, many, many people over here know my cousin Pramod Deja, you know, so his mom, who's very, very fit and healthy, I was talking to her one day and she said to me that, and she's always maintained her weight, you know, she said to me that she would never, ever eat till to the point where her tummy would be full. And you see, so that is one thing which is very, very important because you have to leave, and this is then Ayurveda, this my mom also tells me that, you see, Vata, Pitta and Tapa, you have to leave space for all of them to work in your body. That, what you are eating, it's the entire thing, um, whether it's the consumption of water, the con consumption of food, and for weight, the most important thing is that do not eat if you're not hungry. It, you see, because that means that your system has not digested the food that you've eaten before. And then you put more. And then you put more in, it just, it is nothing. You know, and that is how cholesterol goes up. It leads to all kinds of issues. Because where will that food go? Hmm. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone? Can you also mention, you know, eating as per the movement of the sun, like the first meal with the... Like you don't yeah, yeah, so that is to do with the doshas. Like for instance, um, in the middle of the afternoon, when the sun is at its peak, is when your digestive fire is also at its peak. Everything is connected. So your heaviest meal should actually be in the afternoon. As the sun starts going down, your digestive fire also becomes less and less active. So if we keep that in mind and eat according to that, it will be, it will be amazing. That alone will really help with weight loss. Mm. You know, it's a holistic, weight loss is a holistic thing. It's not a, it's not a quick fix. One question. Hum log jo fasting karte hain, to we take fruit, we take juices, we take uh, lemon water and all. Is it allowed? Yeah, there are different types of fasting. I mentioned that there are different types of fasting. There is one particular type of fasting where you only eat fruit, but certain fruit. Then there's a particular, then there's a type of fasting where you are only allowed to have milk products and nothing else. There are many types, but then there's a fast type of fasting where you only drink water and nothing else. Is it there in the middle? Yeah. But it sounds like fasting. Dry fasting, I would not advise. Yeah. But in some of our fasting, we have fruits. And then since Mita is allowed, we have a lot of sweets yes. also. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. There's no fasting then. <laughs> so, you know, um, sugar is the number one, like number yeah. one enemy. It is, sugar is as dangerous as um, tobacco. And you know, when a person, because I'm always a cancer survivor, I can tell you that uh, when a person gets cancer, they ask you two things. Are you having sugar? They cut out sugar completely. And um, is the aluminium, are there aluminium utensils in your house? Is food being cooked in them? And it's interesting because in Ayurveda, aluminium is completely prohibited in the kitchen. And um, so you have to watch out for sugar. That is the number one enemy. Poison. Absolute poison. Processed sugar. Sorry. Hi, Vikram. Uh, I just wanted to ask you one thing that what are the food items that we can use in our daily life which can keep cancer at bay? You know, because after, especially after COVID, we've noticed that, you know, more and more people are being diagnosed with cancer. My mom was also diagnosed with cancer uh, last year. And she's one of the fittest person I've known all my life. So what are the f things that we can do and the, especially the food items that we can, you know, use in everyday life that can keep cancer at bay? So, um, one is of course Amla, which is, I recommend that to everyone. It is yeah. because it is so, you know, the kind of antioxidants and the bioavailability of it is so high that that is one. Moringa is another one. Then if you go, if you go through the, uh, I've listed a, a, about eight, nine herbs that I recommend very strongly. You go through those and see how you can implement it and how you can incorporate them in your life. That that will be okay. Um, sugar has to be avoided. Yeah, yeah. just you know, Sugar, so you know, when, with me now, when I go to somebody's party, like I've gone to a birthday party last night, and because I did not eat the cake, 
because if you're going out all the time and everywhere you go, people are not making healthy desserts. And I, I, I tell my friends, even in my son's school, I brought it up in the British school, and I said that you can't, you know, that every time there's a birthday, there's a cupcake coming. You know, I don't want that for my son. You know, um, because good is advice. Yeah, good is good. Good is very good for the lungs. It's got antioxidants and it's a very good uh, substitute for sugar. But they say calorie-wise, calorie-wise it harms you as much as you take sugar. Good. So good has calories, but a lot of food have calories. But good, the benefits of good is more than are, the they far outweigh the calorie issue because you see, uh, it for the for your lung, it's the best thing. So we should have good every day. Now in the evening special, so just cleanse the system. It, it has got antioxidants, it's got healing properties. Good is fantastic. We can use it in curd also. Yeah, yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, what is the best time to take that? Yes, a lot of people take it at night because it calms you, right? So most people take it at night. So that's a very good time to take it. Um, or and the other very good time to take it is after the workout or after the strenuous exercise that you've done. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What herbs or what products are good for hair? So, again, <laughs> <laughs> apart from Amla. <laughs> so you have, you have <laughs> Goringa, then you have uh, among the dry fruits, walnuts and almonds are very good for the hair. Uh, Shikakai is very good for the hair. And um, there is a product that we make, uh, you know, it's called Sundari Kalm. Uh, that has got every herb in it that a woman needs in her body. That's very good for the hair. Sundari is very good for hair. <laughs> See, uh, I'm a hardcore surgeon, right. and uh, <clears throat> surgeons don't believe in allopathic, homeopathic, and Ayurveda. They're a different class altogether. It's uh, different from Ayurveda. I'm not an allopathic guy, or a, so I really enjoyed listening to you. And we incorporate everything in our clinical practice. I really enjoyed it. I have more coffee. I have a 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 I got back from work at 5 in the morning. I have a coffee. I have a coffee. I have a coffee. I have a coffee. I have a I have a coffee. 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 Pale Grog Nada Pale Grog Nada Zindiki Kevaste Sif Sayam Kisar is in each of the name. He needs something more. Or you can answer that. No, 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 well, she okay, just left. Okay, so um, she and I were having this conversation. Yeah. What are the vices that we have? And she and I both wake up in the morning dreaming of our morning coffee. Now, I am Vata dominated uh, amongst the Tridosha. So, for Vata people, um, having coffee on an empty stomach is the worst thing for anybody. And we were thinking that your people have such horrible vices, and sh we just have coffee kavais that we want to have it first thing in the morning. So, should we just live with this? And we were there, I said to her, no. We, we, we can't, we can't. We have to fix this as well. <laughs> we take a coffee in the morning, black coffee, and it is very good for liver? No, not. Um, so, coffee should never be had on an empty stomach because it disturbs the pitta and the vata is immediately. It the I mean, so, that is against Ayurveda. You should have coffee between breakfast and lunch. That's the best time. What about chai? Same. Uh, what about the same? How does Ayurveda see alcohol? Black coffee. Alcohol. How does Ayurveda see alcohol? Not I have to pass it on. इतना ज्यादा मतलब ये पिज्जा वगैरह बर्गर वगैरह खा रहा है मैं ये चाहती हूं कि आप कुछ ऐसी दवा आयुर्वेद से बनाएं 
कि वो उसकी तरफ अट्रैक्ट है आज के युवाओं में ये बहुत बड़ी समस्या है तो इस ये मैं इसलिए जानना चाहती हूँ इसका इसका सबसे बड़ा सोल्यूशन है एजुकेशन You have to educate children from a very young age about the do's and don'ts of the of your diet, of health. That is very important. It starts from there, and you know you have to show them that instead of this, you have this. This is the healthier option. Like instead of bread, you have a roti. This is the healthier option. Why? And you you will have to explain. You know, knowledge is um, knowledge is key in this. Let him read the book. Then we see. Then we talk to him. Excuse me. I like to answer this question. Which is alcohol. So you know we have some products that are self-generated alcohol, which is the Asa and the Arish ka entire family. Just like so, it works something like the way red wine works, but not that kind of alcohol, obviously, much lesser. But if you're talking about hard liquor, then that's a no-no. So now that's why it's not theory. That's a no-no in all theories. Yeah, hard liquor. Absolutely. Sir, it all depends on geography. In which geography you are living. And how active you are. Yeah. How active you are. That is affecting your culture. When I have Europe, I have the Patli. यहाँ पर भी जोधपुर के आदमी को देखो तो बोले क्या है उनका स्वागत है। यहाँ पर आप देखो मैं जोधपुर में कोई मोटा बोले जैसे अरे जयपुर में एक सेट सेट मिल जाएगा आपको। जोधपुर में नहीं। बिकॉज What it does is it cools the body, and um, we've noticed one thing that that in families where there's a lot of neem and pudina being used, there are issues that men develop. You know, when it comes to erectile dysfunction and things like that, so you have to be very careful. Men have to be careful with this. You have to have things that are warm. Excess of pudina. If you're having pudina every day, and and if you're having neem, excess is used. Because there are families where they use it every day. That is not recommended. मोरिंगा क्या गर्म होता है या तफीन मोरिंगा मोरिंगा इन बैलेंसेस तो ना गर्म है ना ठंडा है बैलेंसेस बोल्ड डिपेंडिंग ऑन व्हाट इस व्हाट यू विंटर में ही यू इट्स थ्रू आउट द ईयर थ्रू आउट द ईयर सो बिकम हाउ मच क्वांटिटी ऑफ मोरिंगा यू शुड टेक एवरी डे लाइक वन टीस्पून No, so it depends on um, it depends on what's available to you in the sense that um, powder form. I have powder, powder form. form. No, less than half a teaspoon. Less than half. Less than half. Because the amount that could fit in a capsule is capsule. the amount that you need. Because the con the amount that could fit into a capsule and the size of a tablet is very similar. Okay. So you don't need more than that. And even for the kids, it's the same quantity. No, less than that. Less than that. One fourth a teaspoon. And yes. when should one take it? Oh. Any time. Any time. You you can mix uh, it with your food, right? I put it yeah, in my yeah, food. Yeah. Fruit juice is yeah. anything. anything. Uh, the other thing is that you should not have anything for a very long time. In the sense that this food mm-hmm. you're having for ringa, you have it for four five months. You give it up for a couple of months. Okay. Completely give it up. Mm-hmm. Hot from inside because the semen is hot. Okay. So if you are constantly having something that is that is at loggerheads with this principle, it will affect you adversely. Yep. Okay. So give them garlic. <laughs> and so, yeah, so garlic is very good, but you must remember one thing about garlic um, that you have to Sadhguru is so completely against it. The thing about garlic is that you have to have the same quantity every day for it to help you. If you have too much of it one day and then not have it the next day, it's actually going to be counterproductive. So even if you're having say one loaf of garlic, then you have that every day. Then don't put it in the rest of your food. Oh. Only then will garlic work as a medicine, not otherwise. Can I don't put it well. 
सो डोंट मिक्स इट योर फूड देन डोंट एक्सीड द क्वांटिटी सारे खाने में कोई मिला जाएगा द क्वांटिटी कैन नॉट वेरी फॉर वैल्यू फॉर यू एज अ मेडिसिन आम के बारे में आपने बताया पके हुए आम के बारे में हां मैं नहीं आया नहीं जाता नहीं पके हुए आम ये आपने भी कितने आम एक दिन में अच्छा गार्लिक और हनी साथ में खाया जाता है हां इट्स अ वेरी गुड कॉम्बिनेशन गार्लिक हनी एंड ब्लैक पेपर यू मेक द थ्री ऑफ देम इट्स अ फैंटास्टिक कॉम्बिनेशन डू वी नीड टू हैव एन एम्प्टी स्टमक एम्प्टी स्टमक वुड बी द बेस्ट इफ यू कैन garlic and honey and black pepper so in that people even store it yeah yeah people even store it you put the garlic in a bowl of honey and just yeah. keep it here for the reason honey is so much right difficult to get garlic and honey picture that is true so you have so you have, i think um <coughs> manuka honey would still be more reliable but i think most of the honey in india is all sugar all sugar in it questionable uh, i have a question Yeah. So you mentioned that uh, your biology is like water dominated. So how do we figure out? Like I believe that I have more acidic kind of things. So, um, water, pita, and kapha. Water, pita, and kapha. Yeah, like how how one figures it out that you know, like the their body is like uh, you know which one is dominating. So you have to actually go to a professional person for him to tell you. You cannot uh, decide that for yourself. But we, but roughly speaking, a um, person who is um, कफा डोमिनेटेड विल हैव अ टेंडेंसी टू पुट ऑन वेट अम अ पर्सन हु इज वाटर डोमिनेटेड लाइक आई एम विल नॉट पुट ऑन वेट अ पर्सन हु इज पिता डोमिनेटेड पिता इज फायर राइट सो दैट पर्सन विल बी शॉर्ट टेंपर्ड दैट पर्सन विल बी अम दैट पर्सन विल हैव ऑल द क्वालिटीज ऑफ फायर नाउ वाटर डोमिनेटेड पर्सन विल फाइंड इट डिफिकल्ट टू सिट फॉर अ लॉन्ग टाइम एट वन प्लेस बिकॉज़ बिकॉज़ व्हेन इट कम्स टू विंड एंड एयर इट्स कांस्टेंटली मूविंग and it's it's really interesting because um a vata dominated person will find it difficult to sleep <laughs> and will get best sleep when they sleep on the floor or something that represents the floor like a very hard surface and i've seen this with my own experience because va because that wind which is constantly moving it needs grounding or thing very 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 important okay so like uh, but for anything you have to go to a professional person Okay. okay but based on your own like you know you would get like i would get acid reflux kind of thing you know a lot that's so, pitta, that's pitta. That, so i would assume that uh, it's more like pitta is like yeah. affecting it that means the fire in your system is not balanced and that's why they this acid reflux is happening yeah. तो किसी में दो चीज भी हो सकती है नहीं सब में दो चीज होती है मतलब तीनों होती है लेकिन हां देयर आर ऑलवेज टू देयर आर मोर डोमिनेंट सो वाटर You said nimbu pani is alkaline. Is alkaline. Right, but I get acidity when I have nimbu pani empty stomach. Yeah, so people so that happens to a lot of people. Yeah. Um, so for me, nimbu pani and empty stomach works very, very well. It it's so the best for me. It works very well. The that again depends on your constitution, your your individual constitution, and you must remember that everybody's body reacts differently to things. So I mean, how how to balance that? So then you have it later. Don't have it on empty stomach. It's not good for you. And for someone like me, like who get like acid reflux in the morning, like so, what should we start our day with? With water. Okay. With water, as much water as you can have in the morning, because that will calm down the pitta in your body, and then you have cooling things. Okay. And the acid down. reflux is also because the food is not getting digested properly. Mm-hmm. So that's what I was saying earlier. Where will that food go? It has to go somewhere. What about water? One should have unhealthy. Water throughout the day, or uh, cold water is okay. So cold water is not okay. Um, uh, you know, if you have to have it, have it in unhealthy. But it's ideally not okay. Room temperature is best. Uh, warm water is very good. And after a meal, so for weight loss and other things, after a meal, if you have hot water, that really aids in weight loss because the agni tattva goes. into it which then is compatible with the agni in your system and it facilitates digestion of food right after a meal yeah so after, right after a meal you have hot water i do that does the does the pitta and kapha do they actually uh, are in different in different stages of life for us or do they change so your basic constitution Uh, will remain the same, but because these are subtle forces and energies acting in your system, they are constantly changing. But not to that extent. Like for instance, I am water dominated. I will not become kapha. Throughout my life, I will not become kapha. 
So then your basic constitution remains the same. Eyes is bad. Yes. <laughs> and I think eyes are bad. As ghee 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 there is whoever wants to be first to let me know, I'll put them in touch. So, Preeti Aunty, ice is a no no. No no. And how many mangoes a day? That keeps the doctor away. Half. That keeps the doctor away. And no half. One fourth of what was originally written for Ayurveda has survived after the burning of Nalanda. So where do you source all this material from? Three the, fourth is gone. Uh, no, no, so, so one no, no three fourth is not gone. I think half <coughs> so what I have what I've understood from my research is half is gone, half is there. So I sometimes wonder that the half that went would have been so valuable as well. Now, there are two books that the government of India has approved as uh, the legend books for Ayurveda. One is by them. And one is by us, so by Vedna, it is called the Ayurveda Sar Sagre. So any Ayurvedic formulation or anything that Ayurveda claims has to come from these two books and they are very similar. But these these two sources are original sources? Yeah, they are, they are, they are the original sources. So what, what got burnt out in the rest of the half? You know, I don't know, but that could have been so valuable. This is something which has been discussed many times and people are trying to piece it together but it's not possible. There has been no effort in all these centuries to piece together. Then Ayush is constantly trying to do it but... What do you think about books? What do you think about memory? There are many things in the mind. 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 And everything originates from your gut. I mean, yeah. is it, is it, so how, uh, what is your take on this? So that's true. So, you know, the gut is a very important part of Ayurveda actually. Uh, and um, it's all about the movement of Vata, Pitta, Kapha. It's all about digestion. It's all, it, 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 so it's all there. That the solution to maintain a happy and a healthy gut is there in Ayurveda. And one of the things that people don't realize that leads to gut issues is incompatible food combinations. Yeah. Really, and you know, it is something that really needs to be looked into very carefully. Can we eat fruits and empty stuff? So, some fruit like apple or an empty stomach is excellent, but if you want to have a pomegranate on an empty stomach, it's not great because those seeds are very rough. And um, so, what, what will happen is that instead of acting on food, it will act, act on the stomach lining. Similarly, papaya has pepidine which is used also to melt meat. So you cannot eat papaya on an empty stomach. It's a digestive. So what so, will it digest? So it should melt the fat now. <laughs> <laughs> papaya should not be taken on an empty stomach. No. Usually no. people do take it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, in the long run it's not to put a stomach lining. <laughs> and uh, so stomach lining. So what would you recommend for like you know someone having acidic uh, like the uh, thing right to make the body more alkaline? There seem to be two conflicting uh, views. One is that you should also eat fruits, empty stomach. Certain yes. fruits, like apple or an empty stomach is the not best thing citrus, to eat. No citrus, no citrus. You can have many Palani? many fruits on an empty stomach, but the one you should not eat on an empty stomach are papaya, bananas. Bananas also? Bananas. No, most people do eat it now, but in Ayurvedic texts, it says that you should not. <laughs> because it's not because it's not because it's not because it's not because if you eat a banana after the meal, the release of energy is very gradual and that will see you through the rest of the day. And that will? See you through the rest of the day. Because banana is a very, very nutritious fruit. Yes. It's very nutritious. And if you take it on an empty stomach, that energy gets used up quickly and some of it is also not absorbed in your body. Vikram, does your book also mention about the uh, Ayurveda and the unlocking of the Ida Brimla and the Shushmana Chakras? No, no, we have to tell them because I, Ayurveda, they claim yeah. that uh, other than yoga, they can actually unlock these 
Chakras, the big large issue. You mean Kundalini? So I've written about, about it. I've written about Kundalini Yoga and I've written about the Chakras, yeah. but not in too much uh, uh, depth yeah. simply because the idea was to have a simple book. It's very difficult. You know, I, there was so much more I've written about the Koshas, which are, yeah. which are more important than the Chakras in Ayurveda, you know. But I kept it very short simply because it's, it's a book that's uh, for everybody. What do you say about the combination of milk and banana? When maybe put bananas. So it it suits me. It's very high in calories. Very very high in calories. And you that that the top and cheese. These are very high in calories. So somebody who's vata dominated, for instance, it will be good for them. But somebody who's kapha dominated, it's it would not be recommended for them. Kapha dominated should not have rather bananas. Yeah, they should not have bananas. And what about juices? So, it's better to have fruit than juice. Better to have fruit than juice. Yeah. You see, a lot of the juices, because they are also strained, yeah. what, end, what you end up getting is. Other rough is, is gone. It's gone. Yes. And it's like glorified sugar syrup, you know, is what you end up getting. Banana and honey together? Yes. Banana and honey. Excellent. What about the jackfruit? Jackfruit is good. Uh, no, that depends whether your system can digest it or not. People say it's very good for health. Jackfruit is very good for health. Because most fruits are good for health. You know, whether it's whether it's kiwi or you name the or, or it's or it's pears, they're all very good for health. Pears have a large amount of uh, vitamin C. All fruits are good for health. In fact, you mentioned in your book that melons have to be eaten alone by themselves, yeah. by themselves <coughs> and not mixed with other fruits. Mm. Oh. Melon. Melon. Yeah. And fruits should be eaten before sunset. Yes, definitely. Ah, always in the afternoon times, you know, before four age. Before four. Not after but all these new age, But all these new age dietitians, they say you must have a fruit before you go to sleep. Okay. So, uh, you know, I don't know where they are getting it from. No, but I don't know where they are getting it from. See, a lot you have to understand that a lot of the new age dietitians are functional medicine practitioners. But if you if you look at what Wikipedia says about functional medicine, it's taking a little bit from here, a little bit from there, a little bit from everywhere, but most of it is not researched. And we don't have enough evidence to prove that all of those things are correct. Absolutely. Like now they are saying that you should take vitamins intravenously. So you know, um, but we but there isn't enough evidence to prove that that is okay and what the long term effects of that would be. So functional medicine, I think in parts is okay, but you it's too new. Can't think so, um, Yog says that okay. you should uh, alternate between fasting and overeating to lose weight. That is what is written in uh, Asan Pranayam Mudra. No, but overeating what and in which meal? So, is, they are making you overeat a particular thing that would be as a particular dish once for a specific reason, and that would be under, there will be many other factors in it. But in general, you should never overeat. Yeah, so that, uh, that is one line I could never understand because they say to combat your weight. Like no, so they are trying to shock the system. Like we spoke about, we spoke about shocking the system. But overeating is not the way to shock. There are other ways, better ways to shock the system. Yeah, and like, sometimes it will make you, certain doctors I know make you overeat a particular thing for one meal only. Uh, but that's again a very, very um, specialist kind of a job. It's not a general thing, it's not something that you can do by yourself. No, like uh, we've been told like after fasting for 9 days in the Naratras, mm -hmm. on the 10th day you should have a heavy meal, which is quite mm -hmm. contradictory. You can't no, you can, that first. Yeah, so you should, ideally you should not because even, if you, even common sense okay. would say that it would not, yeah, it would not make exactly sense. Right. You can't the important the thing yeah. here to remember is that after fasting what you eat is what your body will absorb very fast. Mm -hmm. So if after fasting you end up eating junk, you know, you are doing your body a very, very big disservice because the body is looking for nutrition after fasting. So that is why Kheer was... Uh, Makhana. Kheer was had Makhana a kind of the... And Makhana was so good, you know. So, Makhana is a... 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 I was a keynote speaker at a national seminar on music therapy. Just in music. So, uh, you can find that article uh, it's on the it's on the that I just want to read okay. three lines from that. Yeah. Since you have it was it, uh, my article talks about how to activate the Rida Pringla and the whole nerve system through music. But they also mentioned you mentioned about three doshas. So I've mentioned about it in the article. The Samveda mentions that the human body is dominated by three doshas. The but but 
Vata, Vata, Pit are tough. Okay, I don't like adding A to it, but they will come. What? And then the disease related to the particular doshas can be effectively cured by Rak Chikitsa. And Saraswati Bahal Library in Tanjore has a whole list of it, how to do it. So, I have just, for an example, for example, Rag Bhairavi has been found to approve the diseases of the Kaf Dosh. For example, asthma, chronic cold, sciences, and chest related problems. It's all Jitta bhi kaf dosh ka hai na, it is uprooted by the Rav Khairi. So, but Rav Khairi, I don't know, you still need antibiotics and I've seen the Rav Khairi. It's a part of the holistic tree. It's a part of the holistic tree. It's a part of the holistic tree. So, anything, what it says is, anything which has a rishabh in soft, soft, I don't think I get, Komal rishabh. Komal Rishabh will be there. So, Komal Rishabh has the power to actually approve the Kaf Dosh. So, and it has to, Komal Rishabh has the power to actually... Next time I have a Kaf, I will come to him. Do you have to sing it or just listen to it? Sorry? Or play it? You have to listen to it. Thank you. 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 Last question. No. Last question before Anu goes. Last yes, question. yes, yes, Nishi. Uh, uh, we have been hearing about what is good and what is not good, uh, but how much of that is good? How do we decide? So, how much of amla should we have? Uh, does overdose? So, so, you don't, yeah, of course, overdosing is very bad. Um, you do not need to put one amla in your system in a day. One amla. Yeah, one amla is enough. It has enough antioxidants and vitamin C to put it. But juice can be taken. But remember that it oxidizes very quickly. So when when you take out the juice, you have to have it immediately. Immediately. You can't give it time. It will be dark. It will become black. That's 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 so that is that true and if it is then how do we go about it? So that will again depend on your vata, pitta, cup of, uh, you know, the combination of that because something that will make my body alkaline uh, may not make yours better but it was like for her <laughs> and one does not work for her in the morning. Neither for me. The same apple cider vinegar, vinegar hmm. is very good for... Uh, so apple cider vinegar is very good uh, but there is also um, there is also theory that doesn't agree with it totally. I have tried apple cider vinegar, it did not work And the thing is that Nimbu Pani would be a better option than apple cider vinegar but in the long run. Is it true that you should try to keep our bodies alkaline? That, that's like an inverse nature. Yeah, but that is again, that's true, that, that is the truth. But you must remember that um, Vata, it comes back to the Tridosha theory. On, on, on what your dosha is, your predominant dosha is, and then you have, then your food has to be around that. For your body to be able to even absorb that food and make and make your body alkaline. If you're not absorbing something that I'm <coughs> absorbing, then it's not working for you. Yes. So you think exercise me dekte hai logo, saath me pani pite jata hai. Phir kuch karta hai, so they are keeping themselves hydrated. So that is fine. There is nothing. There is no evidence to say that that's not good. But obviously, you can't overdo it because then you will not be able to exercise. But sips of water is good, of course. So we are doing yoga, and we are taking water also. No, so with yoga, there is a very clear thing. You have to do yoga on an empty stomach, and after you've done yoga and pranayam, especially. You're not supposed to even water should be had after 20 minutes because your body goes into a different state and a different temperature inside. So one or two things I want to say, one is that never take a shower after a meal. You have to take a shower before a meal. And if you're doing yoga, um, hardcore yoga and pranayam, it has to be done on a, on a completely empty stomach and after 20 minutes you should have water and then eat, not till 20 minutes. We can't take water in between. No, not, not, not if you're doing pranayam. Because you see, if you're doing kapal bhati, there is no scope for there to be anything in the system. Otherwise, how will you do the breathing exercise? Yes. So and know. there are exercises in yoga that squeeze the stomach, you know. So, there's, if you have water in your stomach at that time, you'll puke. No, one hour before you so, Half an hour before is fine. Kana can give good to auntie. Any questions? <laughs> I'm very impressed. So, I don't need to ask you anything. <laughs> 
I'm not the expert, honestly. Oh, no, 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 so as you said, like you know, the first thing in the morning you take a glass of water. But if I, if I plan to do yoga, then that's not true. Then don't take water. Oh, so you take less then water. You then you wait for some time. Wait for some time. Oh, Sorry, okay. somebody yeah. Do yoga after half an hour. Yeah. Or okay. you can do power yoga, I think. Wait for a little while and then do nothing. So like not immediately. One last question. Last question. Last question. Last question. Last question. All these. Uh, Where do you grow it? They are so, they are so strong it, uh, from people who specialize in this. Huh? Like in Kerala, in Uttarakhand, we have suppliers who specialize in this. And even with them, this is the third generation that doing it. Okay. Yeah. But so there is so a kind of pollution, you know, there is pollution of the soil and water. Does it affect these uh, people so, uh, luckily, a lot of the herbs mm -hmm. uh, like Giloy and stuff that you're talking about, they don't need the extra fertilizers and insecticides and pesticides. They don't need it. They are fine. That is how they are. Um, the ones that need it um, are the ones that we very carefully monitor. Uh, R&D, like my mother is the one who is hitting R&D and she's very, very strict about that. <coughs> uh, there have been times when three to four trucks full of Thing that, uh, something has come from Kerala and everything has been returned because it hasn't passed the test. It is uh, a problem with some of the very uh, commercial Ayurvedic medicines that are available in the market, they uh, cause liver damage. So, you see, a lot of um, there are lots of quacks also who are, who are doing this, right? And where this stuff is coming from, you do not know. So they are giving you medicines, whether it's Ayurveda or homeopathy or even naturopathy. They are giving you these tonics to have with no labeling. They are saying, oh, we, we are the ones who died and those are the products that are causing the maximum amount of liver damage. So you might be aware that 10, 11 years ago, uh, it was also in the news, that uh, they carried on a big research, uh, you know, survey and everything and they actually, because uh, our allopathic medicines, you know, you actually test it, there's a you have, you have to pass the test with the lab as to what exactly is in there. They, they subjected a lot of Ayurvedic medicines and they found that the high, the heavy metal content was very high, especially lead. The metal content, metal content is very high. So that, so I want to, um, so I want to clarify that. You know, this is also a lobby by a lot of um, allopathic doctors and the allopathic branch of medicine. There are certain products that are made with metal in them. Like Swaran like Chandi Bhasa. But they are not meant for us. They are meant for people who are really suffering, who are who have very, very extreme health conditions and situations. So Swaran Bhasam by its name will have gold in it. You you get it, but that's not meant for you or me. Similarly, there are certain bhasams that are made for certain ailments and they are made in a way where, us, where the presence of a certain metal is required to fix that. Thank you, Vikram and Anvita, for this very interesting and informative session. Yeah, it was very interesting. Very yes, interesting. and we got the maximum uh, questions from the audience in this <laughs> session. Uh, I would like to request uh, Paige Rashi, ma'am, to come and felicitate Vikram. Please, ma'am, please. <laughs> Deshashi Malhotra ma'am has taught me for many years in Notre Dame. She's a known figure. <laughs>